Hello and welcome to this video on creating an interesting warp text effect using Puppet Warp in Adobe Photoshop. I'll click New File to create a brand new file. Mine's the size of my screen, 1920 by 1080. It has a white background, RGB color. I'm clicking Create. It doesn't really matter how big your document is. So I'm going to click on the Type tool. I have my type already selected at a sort of size. I'm just going to type my word, which is bizarre. I'm a little bit concerned about the spacing between these two letters, so I'm going to select them, go to the character panel here. I'm just going to decrease the spacing a little bit. I want them to have a bit of breathing room, but I think that that was too much. Now for this word, I want the characters to move. So I'm going to the layers palette. I've got my type layer here. I'm going to right click on it and choose convert to smart object. That's important because the Puppet Warp tool will otherwise want to rasterize my type and I don't want that to be the case. I'll go to Edit and then Puppet Warp. And this gives us access to the Puppet Warp grid, which is already in place. So I'm going to click here to add a pin onto this letter. And what I'm going to do is move it using that pin. It's really important that you don't put a second pin in. So let me just go and do that put one pin in and then try and move it from here. Well, I'm going to get this weird rotation. It's really hard to keep the letters intact. If you want that effect, go and do it. It's just that if you want to just move the letters and keep the style of the letters intact, then you just want one pin. Let's go in here and put one for the Z and just move it into position. I'm actually going to overlap all these text objects or text letters. So I'm just adding one pin and then moving the characters around. I'll click the check mark. So now I have my type effect. It is a layer inside this document in Adobe Photoshop and it has this smart filter effect applied to it. Now we can apply other effects. So for example, I'm going to add a stroke to these characters. I have this sort of purple stroke here. So I'm just going to add it. And let's go and add also a pattern. So I have a pattern that I had already selected. And we can also add a bevel and emboss here too. So I've got this sort of bevel and emboss effect. At this stage, the characters are all joined together. And if I want to edit that to change it, move the characters around a little bit, I can just go back into my Puppet Warp. So I'm just going to double click on the Puppet Warp here and I can go back to my characters and I can move them apart and they're going to separate and come with all their effects intact. I just need to make sure that I hover over the correct pin for each character before I move them. So I'm not adding additional pins. And you can see now that the effect is actually split to individual letters. This bevel and emboss and stroke effect are still applied to individual letters. The text is on the face of it editable. It's editable in sense of being able to be moved. The problem is that we can't actually edit the text with this puppet warp in place because it just doesn't work that way. Just going to make a duplicate of this that's not linked so that when I make a change to the type, I'm going to show you that it doesn't work any longer. I'm going to double click on this. This is the embedded smart object. So I'm just going to change my word to bizarre. Now the word fits in the smart object perfectly. If it didn't, I would need to fit it so that it fits within this object size. Click the check mark to apply it. And then I'm just going to close my smart object. I am going to save it because it's saved inside that Photoshop file. And you can see that it has broken up. If we go to the layers panel, we'll see what happened when we go back into this puppet warp. The Puppet Warp is still expecting these letters to be spelling out the word bazaar, B-A-Z-A-A-R. But in actual fact, the word that we've got is bizarre and the Puppet Warp just isn't working for that. If we go back out of here and turn off the Smart Filter and the Puppet Warp, you can see that our text is intact. So we could go back and add a different Puppet Warp effect. What I'm going to do is trash this one. So I've cleaned that all up. I'm going to reapply my smart object, so convert to smart object and then restart up the puppet warp again. Now we've got access to these characters, these new characters. 
and we can warp them using Puppet Warp. So I hope you found that interesting and you see now how you could use Puppet Warp to create interesting text effects in Adobe Photoshop. Before we finish up, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.